Hi everyone, welcome to the Fish ID Station today. My name is Lee Samard and I'm a fisheries biologist with the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. Today I'll be going through some of the commonly uh, caught species that you might encounter while going out ice fishing here in Vermont. Uh, I'll go through some of the characteristics that you can look for to know uh, what species you've caught, as well as a little bit of information about uh, where you might find some of these species. To start with today, I'm going to go through uh, the panfish species that you might catch while ice fishing. Panfish uh, is a sort of a generic term for some of the, the smaller bodied uh, fish species in Vermont that uh, are pretty ubiquitous or pretty common, uh, commonly caught in water bodies throughout the state, from Lake Champlain to the Connecticut River to uh, some of the inland water bodies that are probably right in your backyard. Uh, the first species that I'll talk about today is a yellow perch. Yellow perch are probably one of the most common uh, species that you'll encounter uh, while ice fishing and is certainly the one that's most targeted by anglers. Uh, yellow perch, they can range in size from, you can catch ones that are probably three or four inches or you might catch ones that are uh, as big as uh, 12 or 13 inches. This is a pretty typical size of, of what you might catch. Um, and as you can see, yellow perch are, are pretty easy to identify by uh, the, the overall yellow color that they have, their, their bright yellow bellies and, and these bright orange fins. Uh, that orange color is one of the, uh, my favorite colors to see coming out of a hole in the middle of the winter while ice fishing. Um, yellow perch also have uh, these dark black stripes down their sides. And as you'll notice, they have two fins on their back, uh, two dorsal fins are, is what you call the, those fins. Some of the other panfish species that you commonly encounter are uh, sunfish. Uh, specifically, we have uh, two species that people often refer to as sunfish, uh, pumpkin seed and bluegill. Um, as you can tell, they look pretty similar. Uh, both of them have more flattened bodies relative to the yellow perch. Uh, so they look more uh, flat and oval um, and you can uh, understand why they're called panfish. Um, one of the key differences between uh, a pumpkin seed and a bluegill is this bright red dot that you'll see on the, uh, the gill plate or the back of the, the cheek of the pumpkin seed. That red dot is a really good giveaway that uh, you have a, a pumpkin seed rather than a bluegill. Otherwise, you'll also notice the coloration. There's all these uh, beautiful iridescent colors on, on the side of a pumpkin seed, uh, these blues and greens and, and yellows as you work onto the bottom. For bluegill, um, they don't have, again, that orange or red dot on their cheek um, and tend to be a little more drab, sometimes a little bit of blue into their colors. Uh, they have some yellow on their, their bellies and as they get bigger and older, they may get some black bars coming down their sides as well. One of the other panfish species that you'll often encounter is, uh, or that you may encounter, is a black crappie. Um, as you notice, crappie, they're another uh, type of panfish. Uh, uh, they have that similar shape as uh, the, the bluegill and pumpkin seed, that flattened shape. Um, but they also, uh, they have more of a mottled pattern to them. Um, in addition to that mottled pattern, uh, you'll notice that uh, if, if it's not quite as frozen, uh, their anal fins and their dorsal fins uh, open up pretty big and are pretty wide uh, relative to the, the length of their, their belly. Um, we have actually two species of crappie in Vermont. Uh, again, this is a black crappie. We also have white crappie, although those are typically only found in southern Lake Champlain. Um, you can tell those apart because they don't have quite the same dark modeling and, and are a little uh, more white in appearance. Um, black crappie, they're not quite uh, as widespread as some of the other panfish, such as perch and pumpkin seed, um, but there are a number of uh, lakes throughout the state that you'll often find these. Uh, so moving into some of the other bigger uh, fish that you may encounter, uh, we'll go next to uh, the, the members of the pike family. Specifically, we have a northern pike and a chain pickerel. As you can tell from sort of the shape of these, as well as uh, the mouths on them, uh, pike and pickerel are uh, predatory fish. Um, they often uh, stalk in weedy areas, uh, although um, often they're cruising along the bottom in, in deeper water as well. 
Um, whereas it, with the panfish, people often catch those jigging or on tip-ups. A lot of people target pike and pickerel, uh, northern pike and chain pickerel, uh, using tip-ups. Uh, again, given they're a predatory fish, uh, often people use minnows or, or other live bait on a hook and wait for uh, the chain pickerel and the northern pike uh, to come through and, and capture that prey. Um, as you can see, they look pretty similar. Both of them are, have a very elongated shape to them. Um, uh, whereas the chain pickerel, though, will have this pretty distinct chain-like pattern, uh, dark pattern uh, along their sides. Uh, another uh, good characteristic, it's a little hard to see on, on this mount, but chain pickerel also have a dark black line right underneath their eye. That's a feature that you won't see when you look at uh, a northern pike. Northern pike, they again, don't have that black line under their eye and also then don't have that chain-like pattern. Instead, they tend to have more of these white uh, dash marks uh, along their side. Um, northern pike uh, often uh, are gonna be a lot bigger than chain pickerel, um, although you can often catch one uh, of, uh, that are younger, that are a smaller size. Northern pike are uh, often caught upwards of uh, 20 pounds or over 40 inches long. Um, those are certainly big fish, but uh, encountering northern pike that are um, 20 to 30 inches is, is very common while out ice fishing. Um, those are some of the, the probably the most common uh, fish species that people target while ice fishing. Um, but then there also are a number of other species that uh, are a little more specialized in terms of uh, uh, how, how you might fish for them, and thus are a little more uh, limited in terms of the number of people that do fish for them. Um, first, what we'll talk about are some of uh, the salmonids or the trout species. Um, here today we have mounts of two different trout species, uh, brook trout and rainbow trout. Um, brook trout, most people often probably associate those with small uh, headwater tributaries and streams coming off the sides of the mountain, but they are also found in many of our uh, lakes and ponds throughout the state. Um, brook trout uh, can be identified through a number of uh, uh, key characteristics. Uh, one of the ones I always look for first is this white leading edge along many of their fins. That white leading edge uh, is something that you won't see in, in some of the other species. Uh, brook trout also have uh, these bright colorful dots, especially um, the red uh, dot surrounded by a blue halo. And if you look carefully at the top of these fish, uh, they have these almost worm-like pattern markings on them. Um, these are called vermiculations uh, and are another uh, characteristic that you can look for uh, to identify whether you have a, a brook trout or not. Uh, the other trout species we have here today is a rainbow trout. Um, these are really popular to fish uh, in many of our lakes and ponds through the ice uh, and again are often targeted using uh, uh, tip-ups and, and minnows or worms uh, set below the ice. Um, one of the ways you, a couple of the ways you can tell a rainbow trout is uh, sort of this pink uh, hueish line that goes along their side uh, or uh, you can also look for all of these black spots, these dark spots along their body. You'll notice them especially along the top of the fish um, and then along the tail, you'll see these parallel lines of dark spots running along the tail. That's a good uh, characteristic you can look for to, to know you have a rainbow trout. Uh, there are other trout species as well people often fish for uh, in Vermont. Lake trout and brown trout are, are those, and, and those have their own characteristics that you can uh, look up as well to, to see how to identify. Um, we also have here uh, bats, uh, specifically the, the two of the species of bass, uh, largemouth bass and smallmouth bass. Um, again, they look pretty similar to each other, but there are a few different characteristics uh, that you can look for. Um, one of the first ones, as their name suggests, is the size of the mouth. Um, a largemouth bass, when its mouth is closed, actually has uh, it, the back of its mouth extends past the eye of, of the fish. Um, whereas when the smallmouth bass, its mouth is closed, that line 
or the back of its mouth only extends to the middle of the eye. So again, the large mouth goes past the eye and the small mouth goes in line with the middle of the eye. Um, the other thing you can look for on largemouth bass is this dark black stripe that's running horizontally along the length of the fish, whereas smallmouth bass often have more vertical barring along their sides. Coloration of fish can vary pretty dramatically depending on what habitat they're living in, whether it's dark water or clear water. Uh, but smallmouth tend to be a little more drabber, darker brown, or, or uh, olive colored, uh, and largemouth bass tend to be a little lighter in color. Uh, finally, the other species we have here today uh, is a walleye. They're actually another member of the perch family. Um, so we have a pretty similar characteristic to the yellow perch in terms of they have two fins along the back of their body. Um, the other things you can look for is this very large white eye. Uh, walleye tend to feed more at night because that eye is so sensitive to light. Um, and so people often target walleye while fishing for them at night. The other thing you can look for, it's, it may not be as obvious right away, but once you see it, it, it stands out, is that bright white tip out on the, the tips of their tail. Um, those are all good characteristics uh, to know that you have a walleye. So those are, if you look at this table, some of the, the bigger species, and you may notice, well, what about this little fish? Uh, most people would see this and think, well, that, that's just bait, that's just a minnow. Um, this is a rainbow smelt, and in many cases, people do use it as bait, uh, especially if you're fishing for, for fish such as lake trout, uh, people will use rainbow smelt um, uh, that either they bought or caught themselves, uh, but you can also catch this yourself and, and eat it as a food fish. Um, they tend to taste really sweet uh, and, and are really easy to uh, clean and, and fry up. So a rainbow smell, again, they, they're, a, they're a small uh, species of fish. As you notice, uh, they, they may not get much longer than a few inches past this, um, but they're skinny and elongated and have this uh, mouth that opens pretty wide and actually has uh, quite a few teeth in it. Uh, given the size of the, these fish, you wouldn't expect it, but along their tongues and the roof of their mouth are many sharp pointy teeth uh, that allow them to help grab their prey. So if you catch um, uh, one of these, uh, they tend to be found, rainbow smelt tend to be found in some of our deeper, colder water bodies. Um, you can uh, identify them by, again, their long, elongated shape, uh, as well as those uh, sharp teeth in their mouth. So these are just a, uh, a few of the number of uh, fish that are commonly found throughout Vermont uh, that you can catch while ice fishing. Um, if you want more information about where you can find these or uh, other techniques of identifying them, there's many resources available to you, uh, especially within our digest and, and on the Vermont Fish and Wildlife page online. Uh, we hope you take this and uh, use these, uh, this information to, to get out yourself and hopefully have a great time ice fishing here in Vermont.